Hello everybody. Uh, in this video coming up, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be doing a water change through the aquariums. I do every Friday, I do water change. I don't really clean the substrate. But today we're going to kind of talk about, uh, a lot of people make comments that all I talk about is under gravel filters. But uh, the under gravel filter itself, there's a lot of science behind it that was lost 40 years ago. And uh, it shouldn't have ever been lost to the hobby. That's what my videos are about. Why did we lose something in this hobby that worked great because we misunderstood it? So that's coming up next in this video. Okay, in this video, what I'm going to talk about is comments that have been made. And those comments basically are that uh, uh, your YouTube all talks about is under gravel filters. Well, first of all, most of the stuff we use in this hobby is old. It was around before I was even born. Air pumps, filters, all this is old technology. Only thing we have done with this technology is made it easier to buy and uh, made it so we have more choices than we did 40, 50, 60 years ago. That's all we've really done. We've made things more reliable such as heaters, things like that than we did years ago. But basically it's just the same technology as we had years ago. When I talk about the under gravel filter plate I talk about that plate because it is easy for most hobbyists to go out and just buy one or you could make one. Now if you want to make a plenum, all you do is you could go get a parabolic louver, which is otherwise known as A-crate from any hardware store, we know it. You can cut it to fit your aquarium, then you can put screen on it or you can put craft screen, which is the harder plastic, which I've shown in my videos, uh, on it. You could hot glue it together. Uh, for an airlift, you can find airlifts easily enough by finding maybe some of these sponge filters. They have a green tube, you just remove the sponge off of it, you can put that in there. You can hot glue it in there, work around it, and put and then you can all you have to do is find some means of holding up the parabolic louver off the aquarium bottom, and that's it. Now, some say, well, the under gravel filter, that void underneath the under gravel filter, that void which you have just made, whether it's a half inch or inch void, that is called a plenum. That is the name that is called. Under gravel filters don't necessarily have a plenum because years ago, you could people would just take two bead and just put tubing at the bottom of their aquarium, drill holes in it, and throw the gravel right on top of the aquarium bottom, and that became their under gravel filter. That would move water through the under gravel filter, but that is just an under gravel filter. I have lots of magazines and stuff on stuff like that where people made them themselves. It's easy to make an under gravel filter. But to make an under gravel filter, that's the under gravel filter plate you're using. That void underneath that filter is a, called a plenum. We use plenums all the time uh, in our heating and air conditioning systems. You will usually have a plenum where a lot of things will come into a box or something like that, that is called a plenum where all the pipe work comes into and that void there is a plenum and that controls everything that may go to your furnace or your furnace itself may be sitting in a room that's airtight when you close the door. That is called a plenum. So it's sucking air from your house, like here in Florida, it sucks air from the top and you have a plenum where they 
air conditioning and heating unit is sitting in and it sucks it into this room and when you try to open up the door you're going to feel a resistance of pressure. That's because that is your plenum. We are doing the same thing in an aquarium. If there's a void underneath that filter plate or the one that you have made, which I've shown plenty of videos on how to make it and why you're doing it, that is a plenum. That's why I use the word plenum. Because if you just want an under gravel filter, well then you don't have to go out and buy a like a liege filter that's about a half inch high. You don't have to go out and buy that. You could literally just stick pipe work underneath your substrate and go that way and buy all your tubing from a hardware store and just drill holes in it. In fact, a lot of your uh, manufacturers did make under gravel filters that were that way. And that's exactly what you would call them. But an under gravel filter plate has a plenum underneath the plate. That's the void that's underneath that. What we found out and what I found out by doing a lot of research and testing, doing my own testing, that we in the past made those go faster and faster. You have to remember these plates came with one inch lift tubes and you had like four lift tubes in a 55 gallon aquarium. You would have to have one or two air pumps that would pump up the water out of these lift tubes as long as you're it was very unsightly but before all that happened all we had was little bitty 3 8 lift tubes maybe six inches long with a bubbler that was about it that's how they did it this was all designed to mimic that of sewage treatment facilities when I did my testing, I found out that we did it right in the very beginning. That's what all these videos are about. If we would have kept up what we were doing, we'd still be using these undergravel filter plates to make a plenum because there's a lot of science behind that. They had everything right. They would tell hobbyists, make your aquarium gravel three, four inches thick. Maybe that's why people didn't like them, because they didn't want to make their substrate that thick. So, you take away the under gravel filter plate, and you can throw your substrate directly on the bottom of the aquarium, and instead of making it three or four inches thick, you only can, you can make it an inch thick. Uh, it was always told to never put your ro ro uh, rocks and decorative items directly on the bottom of the aquarium but now we're being showed this time and time again they put all the rocks in then they put their substrate in but we were never told that a long time ago it was basically you put your substrate in and then you did your aquascaping we're doing it just the opposite of what we used to do and there's a reason why you did your op uh, uh, aquascaping on top of the substrate so it could still move what's in the aquarium in and out of your substrate. Because it doesn't benefit you by taking up space, by putting a rock at the bottom and then putting your substrate around the particular decoration that you just put in there. So through my videos, I explain exactly the science behind it. We did it wrong. You either have a plenum and you don't need a bubbler. And the best ones out there are ones that you just make yourself. You can make them out of egg crate, whatever. And now we have some other things to hold the, the egg crate up that you can buy that are, are porous that you can set up and actually set on top of that. That's even more bacteria space because in that space, as you go deeper into the substrate, you're going to create anoxic conditions and as I have explained these conditions will now finish and complete the nitrogen cycle as we know it. The nitrogen cycle does not end with producing nitrates and then you do a water change. That is not completing the nitrogen cycle. 
that is only going so far with the nitrogen cycle and no further. We're not allowing it to complete the full cycle of how it works in nature. So when you put your substrate directly on the bottom or if you have barely any substrate or anything, that is why when nitrates are produced, we have no choice except a water change or get something that we have to put on the outside of the aquarium or we now make a sump that will have something in the sump to take care of the nitrates. Um, we see this of course in salt water where people are using uh, algae scrubbers and these are designed to take the nitrates and phosphates out. But we have a whole big aquarium we can use that we're not using correctly to do the nitrogen cycle and its completion where we can take nitrates and phosphates and actually have a bacteria that will utilize and steal the atoms of oxygen from these ions and break them down and turn them into more harmless byproducts that can be either expelled in the air or can be used in other means and to help control algae problems and other problems that we have in our aquarium. And as you have learned, it only takes seven parts nitrogen to one part phosphates to create a problem. And that's not very much. But we also know that you can go higher in your nitrates if you start getting rid of your phosphates and bring them down even lower. We also know that. That the main factor of why algae and why things are happening is the phosphates. Phosphates are constantly being produced by the food you're putting in. This is a micro element that's needed by plants, but it's always being produced so you don't have to worry if you're taking it out of the water that's in the aquarium because you're constantly reintroducing phosphates every time you feed your animals. You're introducing phosphates and nitrates. So we don't have to worry about these trace elements coming in to the aquarium. So these people have made comments that all I talk is about under gravel filters. I talk about how to correctly use a filtering plate which is called an under gravel filter plate and how to correctly use it than what we were previously told and how everything got messed up and we changed. And I try to explain to you the science behind it. That was another reason under gravel filters went out of favor. They, plants. Plants didn't like the water movement with oxygen going through so fast over their root systems. I've explained that. So if we can get what's in the tank through our substrate, we can grow the correct bacteria to take care of the nitrogen cycle. We can get the ions that are in our aquarium into that substrate so your plants can utilize those ions and their root systems easier. And that's what these videos are basically about. Not that I'm advocating making an under gravel filter because no, under gravel filters can be made with tubing just laid at the bottom of your aquarium and throw in the substrate on the bottom. There is a science why we use a plenum because we know that in a plenum we're dealing with redox, you deal with a higher redox in that plenum and you're dealing with negative and positive charges both in that plenum versus if you put the tubing directly on the bottom. So we're not exactly talking about an under gravel filter as they used to be built. We're talking about how you can utilize an under gravel filter plate instead of building a plenum yourself. 
because most plates are off the bottom of the aquarium bottom. That void is a plenum. So I, I, I know some people, that's what they're, they advocated that all your channel talks about is under gravel filters and no, I tell you how to use the under gravel filter plate and turn it into a plenum and how to utilize it correctly like they did 50, 60 years ago. That's all. All these are about, then I tell you the science behind it and how it works and why it works. That's all these videos are about. The BCB basket, I explained to you how that works. And I explained to you how we can make our entire aquarium substrate work for us and do the nitrogen cycle and completely do the nitrogen cycle with making very little to no waste product as far as making nitrates which always cause a problem in our aquariums. That's why the people who have plants have advocated so much and focused so much on plants because they don't know how to take care of the nitrates and they don't know how to take care of the phosphates unless they use plants. But we know for a fact that 80% of the hobbyists want fish. And only about 13 to 14% of those people are really in the plants. So we may put some plants in our aquarium, but that is not the main reason we have an aquarium. It's basically the animals that you can put in there that we otherwise could not achieve if we didn't have the science behind it. Our animals would constantly die. So that is what 80% of the people want. They want fish. They want snails. They want shrimp. This is what they want. They want to keep them alive and they want to put them in an aquarium that doesn't get all full of all kinds of algae and problems that they're fighting and turn it into a piece of junk that uh, you're embarrassed that you made this aquarium. That's what we're trying to achieve here. Whether or not you believe it or not, whether you're watching this now, that's what this is about. Educating the hobbyists. Now, I can talk about what everybody else talks about out there. I could talk about the different kinds of fish. I can educate you on all the different fish, but you know what? Every other channel talks about that. I could reset up my tank 27 times over again and show, show you aquascaping, but I'm not an aquascaping expert. I don't have uh, driftwood and everything else at my disposal, plentiful, and I don't have a studio that I could, I have all these things that I could just choose and, and make all these different aquascapes. Well, you know, aquascaping is a preference that each individual likes. I apparently uh, don't want a SpongeBob SquarePants in my aquarium. You know, I'm not six years old anymore. But if that's the aquascaping you want, that's what your preference is, not mine. So we all have a preference when it comes to aquascaping. I can show you all kinds of planet aquascaping, and for that 14% that's really into that, fine. There's plenty of videos out there that will show you that. But you're not going to find plenty of videos getting into the science of an aquarium. They don't exist out there. They just don't exist. The only way you could try to find out any of this stuff if you go on a forum and then you're depending on whatever the experts on the forum are saying and how they're going to tell you their way of doing it and they will and there was one thing that was brought up to me which I thought was quite interesting as someone said that uh, they read an article on the anoxic filtration system uh, had no author to it. So these people write these articles and everything. 
They have done no testing. They have done no research. They won't even put their names to the article that they've written. And they're going to tell you all about the anoxic filtration system and how bad it is, yet they've done nothing of research or anything else to prove anything. They're just going to write about it and diss it. And then you really got to think to yourself, why? Why does it take so many people to say it's wrong? Wouldn't it only just take one? As Einstein said with the theory of relativity, it took over a hundred scientists to say he was wrong. And he said, if I was so wrong, wouldn't it only take one of you to prove me wrong? Not a hundred? And that's the same thing with this. If the anoxic filter didn't work, then why does it take so many people out there to try to prove me wrong? Wouldn't it only just take one? And we found out that Einstein was not wrong about the theory of relativity. He was not wrong. They were wrong. So in this case, this is a case where as the hobbyists, you have choices of what you want to do. You also have to think logically. Why would somebody be so adamantly dissing something that they've never tried, that they know nothing about, yet they're going to diss it like it doesn't work, it can't work. And I've been through this on forums, believe me. This is how people are. So I hope you understand these videos are to explain to you how to make a plenum on the bottom of your substrate. It's not how to use an under gravel filter. There's all kinds of ways you can make under gravel filters. I'm teaching you how to make a plenum. So if someone asks you, what are you doing with your aquarium? You could say, I'm using a plenum. And now you understand why I use these terminologies because of what we are doing and the different electrical charges we are creating and we are creating diffusion we are creating convection, we are creating elements moving by electrical charge. And that's what we are creating in our aquarium so we can complete the nitrogen cycle because people throughout the world do not have the luxury of doing water changes every single week, every, every fortnight, once a month. They do not have that availability to them. So they must learn how to do something to be successful with their aquarium without doing all the water changes. As I've explained to you about the uh, hobbyists with the wild discus that are about, you know, seven inches in diameter, the success these happen. Forty years ago that was not possible. You gotta understand that. That was not possible. He could not have done that. Those fish would have came up sick. They would be getting uh, thin. Their eyes would be clouding up. He would have had to been giving them garlic. Uh, there would have been all kinds of problems. If he was not doing water changes every single day. But he doesn't have to do that to keep wild discus alive and healthy and spawning continuously. He doesn't have to do that. You don't have to do that anymore. We have the science. All I'm doing is telling you the science and presenting you the science. Whether you want to believe it, that's up to you. If you want to use it, that's up to you. That's what these videos are about. If these videos are boring, the only thing I can say, don't watch it. That's fine with me because this is more of a learning YouTube channel. It is not a channel where I am going to tell you what everybody else is telling you of what to do, how to aquascape, and how to throw your substrate directly on the bottom and come up with the same problems we've been having now for 40 plus years. It never has changed. We still have the same problems. 40 plus years now we've been doing this. If it doesn't work, change. 
Like they say, if you keep doing the same thing repetitively and thinking you're going to come up with different results, you're crazy. And that's what we keep doing. We keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, thinking we're going to come up with different results. When we don't and the aquarium fails, then we scratch our head and say, what happened? What, what, what happened? Uh, uh, my aquarium looks like garbage. That's because you keep repeating the same mistakes the guy before you and him and him did. So try something different. What do you have to lose? After all, you have nothing to lose. Anyhow, that's what I want to bring up. Know the difference between an under gravel filter, which could be, just be tubing on your aquarium bottom and throw your substrate there, and know the difference between an under gravel filter plate that you're using to make a plenum. Know the difference between the two because we now understand the science and the difference between an under gravel filter and an under gravel filter plate that creates a plenum. Okay, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching.